What's up everybody? It's your boy Teddy. First ever video and we're gonna start off with some HP Lovecraft. This is Daycon. This shit's really loud in my headset, but it hopefully won't be too loud for y'all. This is a story-based game for what I understand. Rate a very high and free on Steam. Link in description. Let's get it started. Dagon is a faithful interactive adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's work focused on story and atmosphere. You will not find difficult choices, action sequences, or inventory management here. Movement is limited and progressing through locations along with the plot. Alright. I am writing this under ah! appreciable mental strain, since by tonight I shall be no more. That sucks. This is pretty. During the game, you'll encounter interactive elements. Some will allow you to continue your journey. Some, but some is trivia, hidden bullshit. Okay. Ah, window. Penniless, and at the end of my supply of the drug, which alone makes life endurable. Beer. I can bear the torture no longer. Cocaine. I shall cast myself from this garret window into the squalid street below. Do not think from my slavery to morphine but that I am a weakling or a degenerate. When you have read these hastily scrawled pages, you may guess, though never fully realize why it is that I must have forgetfulness or death. All right. So, life sucks. <laughs> History lesson. Morphine entered into use in the 19th century and was routinely administered to treat severe pain during the American Civil War, 1861 to 1865, and World War I, 1914 to 1918. It was also sold without restrictions until 1914. Morphine became more popular after the invention of the hypodermic syringe around 1854. Friedrich, that name I can't pronounce, who first isolated the substance, originally named it Morphium, after Morpheus. The Greek god associated with dreams. At the time when Dagon was published, morphine abuse, known as soldier's disease, already posed a big problem in the United States. Alright, cool. It was in one of the most open and least frequented parts of the broad Pacific that the packet of which I was supercargo fell a victim to the German Sea Raider. That sucks, I think. Bye! It's the Germans! I'm sorry. Jesus! The Great War was then at its very beginning, and the ocean forces of the Hun had not completely sunk to their later degradation. All things considered, the game is pretty. So that our vessel was made a legitimate prize whilst we of her crew were treated with all the fairness and consideration due us as naval prisoners. They put you to work, didn't they? Oh, okay. The Huns were Central Asian nomads who established a dominion in Europe and invaded the Roman Empire in the 5th century AD. They were known as brutal, deadly warriors, and masters of quick raids who also developed powerful composite bows, lassos, and nearly siege weapons nearly early. During World War I, the British used the word, ah, I don't care anymore. Y'all welcome to pause it and read that, I, I, I don't so care. Liberal, indeed, was the discipline of our captors, that five days after we were taken, I managed to escape alone in a small boat with water and provisions for a good length of time. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a lot of guards around for military craft and all that kind of shit. I don't even think they tried. Uh, 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 bah! Spaloosh. When I finally found myself adrift and free, I had but little idea of my surroundings. <laughs> I had a little idea of my surroundings. You're in the water! What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean you don't have any idea? Bitch you in the water. Never a competent navigator. I could only guess vaguely by the sun and stars that I was somewhat south of the equator. Of the longitude, I knew nothing, and no island or coastline was in sight. That sucks. Uh, 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 oh, uh, yeah, uh, the weather kept fair, 
and for uncounted days I drifted aimlessly beneath the scorching sun, waiting either for some passing ship or to be cast on the shores of some habitable land. You'd be lucky. What happening? What's happening here? Uh, 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 all right. But neither ship nor land, land appeared, appeared, and I began to despair in my solitude upon the heaving vastness of unbroken blue. Heaving vastness of unbroken blue. That shit's dope. The change happened whilst I slept. Its details I shall never know. For my slumber, though troubled and dream infested, was continuous. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, let's get closer. I awoke, it was to discover myself half sucked into a slimy expanse of hellish black mire, which extended about me in monotonous undulations as far as I could see. Are you sure? Am I playing the right game? This is supposed to be HP Lovecraft, right? I think I stumbled into a hentai. And in which my boat lay grounded some distance away. Though one might well imagine that my first sensation hey. would be of wonder Stop at so prodigious and unexpected a transformation of scenery, I was in reality more horrified than astonished. For there was in the air and in the rotting soil a sinister quality which chilled me to the very core. Well, yeah, no shit. The region was putrid with the carcasses of decaying fish and of other less describable things which I saw protruding from the nasty mud of the unending plain. Less describable? Uh, tentacles. Tentacles. Hentai tentacles. Upside down octopus. I, I described it. I'm just taking the piss out of this, I know. Pokemon! Perhaps I should not hope to convey in mere words the unutterable hideousness that can dwell in absolute silence and barren immensity. There was nothing within hearing and nothing in sight save a vast reach of black slime. Yet the very completeness of the stillness and the homogeneity of the landscape oppressed me with a nauseating fear. The sun was blazing down from a sky which seemed to me almost black in its cloudless cruelty, as though reflecting the inky marsh beneath my feet. Oh. Yeah, that's a nope. Let's just walk right past the tentacles, you know, hey. As I crawled into the stranded boat, I realized that only one theory could explain my position. Through some unprecedented volcanic upheaval, a portion of the ocean floor must have been thrown to the surface, exposing regions for which innumerable millions of years had lain hidden under unfathomable watery depths. Yeah, that's what you came up with? Uh, yeah, you slept through that. Like, I'm not an expert at uh, being adrift at sea, but I feel like that's some shit you'd wake up to during... So great was the extent of the new land which had risen beneath me that I could not detect the faintest noise of the surging ocean, straining my ears as I might. See, I'd assume I was dead. Nor were there any sea fowl to prey upon the dead things. That's that's my first guess would be wouldn't be awesome. Oh, the volcano erupted and shit came up from the ground. If I was under a baking sun, essentially dying. I would assume that I'm dead right now, and this is hell. For several hours, I sat thinking or brooding in the boat, which lay upon its side and afforded a slight shade as the sun moved across the heavens. Oh, hey, I saw that. Fuck you. You stop it. As the day progressed, the ground lost some of its stickiness and seemed likely to dry sufficiently for traveling purposes in a short time. Okay. That night I slept but little, and the next day I made for myself a pack containing food and water, preparatory to an overland journey in search of the vanished sea and possible rescue. Yeah, rescue. 
Oh, that is pretty. Just like the moon right there with that little bit of horizon. That that is a pretty sight. Never mind the uh, tentacles right there. Unless you find those tentacles pretty, in which case I think you're uh, you're you're on you're on the wrong uh, video website. On the third morning, what the I found the soil dry enough to walk upon with ease. The odor of the fish was maddening, but I was too much concerned with graver things to mind so slight an evil, and set out boldly for an unknown goal. All right. Whoa. Wait a minute. Okay. Just want to look around a little bit. Okay, so there's really nothing at this point. Let's go. All day I forged steadily westward, guided by a faraway hummock which rose higher than any other elevation on the rolling desert. That looks like the fucking headpiece for the bugs from Starship or er, Starship Troopers. Doesn't that look like the fucking headpiece thing? And those those hands, those or those squeaky things, those those don't seem to match the setting. Like, I know it's a setting uh, to you know of indescribable woo, but those don't fit like at all. Whatever. Like I'm talking about that thing. Just a particular model is what I mean. Hello? Oh, yeah, okay. I was, I was going to see if it'd blink at me, and I, but it, it didn't blink. No blink. That night, I encamped, and on the following day, still traveled toward the hummock, though that object seemed scarcely nearer than when I had first espied it. This voice actor just sounds so into it. What the fuck? All right. The creator of Cthulhu Mythos and the fictional underwater city of Rylech was convinced that life could not exist at the bottom of the ocean because the water pressure would make it uninhabitable. Today we know that the darkest depths of the ocean are home to many peculiar organisms. The deepest dwelling fish we have discovered so far, the Mariana snailfish. Ooh, spoopy. Can live about 8,000 meters, more than 26,000 feet, below the ocean surface, in never ending darkness and a hellishly crushing pressures hundreds of times stronger than those found at sea level. Upon glancing at modern photos of deep sea creatures, such as the anglerfish and fang tooth of viperfish, and the truly Lovecraftian characteristics, it's hard not to find some irony in this. I don't know why I did the voice thing, but it seemed appropriate, oddly. Uh, Alright. Uh. By the fourth evening, I attained the base of the mound, which turned out to be much higher than it had appeared from a distance. <laughs> this shit big! And for the record, I, I know I'm taking the piss out of a lot of this, but I actually really enjoy it. It's it's kind of how I cope Into with spoopy things. Valley, setting it out in sharper relief from the general surface. Too weary to ascend, I slept in the shadow of the hill. Oh, I can zoom. Oh, I'm sure that was in the I controls. I just didn't pay attention. Was so wild that night. <laughs> I know not why my dream Uh, let's see Your dreams were wild because you woke up in a hellish landscape That sounded like shit, smelled like shit You're going bonkers And you're seeing things that you shouldn't see I, I cannot imagine Why your dreams were so fucked up But ere the waning and fantastically gibbous moon Had risen far above the eastern plain I was awake in a cold perspiration Determined to sleep no more. No more. No more! Okay. Such visions as I had experienced were too much for me to endure again. And in the glow of the moon, I saw how unwise I had been to travel by day. Without the glare of the parching sun, my journey would have cost me less energy. <laughs> 
Indeed, I now felt quite able to perform the ascent which had deterred me at sunset. Picking up my pack, I started for the crest of the eminence. I have said that the unbroken monotony of the rolling plain was a source of vague horror to me. But I think my horror was greater when I gained the summit of the mound and looked down the other side into an immeasurable pit or canyon. Hmm. Whose black recesses the moon had not yet soared high enough to illumine. I felt myself on the edge of the world. Peering over the rim into a fathomless chaos of eternal night. Through my terror ran curious reminiscences of par and of Satan's hideous climb through the unfashioned realms of darkness. Hmm. As the moon climbed higher in the sky, I began to see that the slopes of the valley were not quite so perpendicular as I had imagined. Hmm. Nice. The only thing I kind of wish is that I wasn't forced to just like this little point of view. I feel like if you're creating this kind of world, a more free expanse to look around and appreciate the the Lovecraftian world that they've created more. Ledges and outcroppings of rock afforded fairly easy footholds for a descent. Whilst after a drop of only a few hundred feet, the declivity became very gradual. Okay. Urged on by an impulse which I cannot definitely analyze, I scrambled with difficulty down the rocks and stood on the gentler slope beneath, gazing into the Stygian deeps where no light had yet penetrated. <laughs> I, I told you we're in a hentai. All at once, my attention was captured by a vast and singular object on the opposite slope. It's a rock! Steeply, and about a hundred yards ahead of me. An object that gleamed whitely in the newly bestowed rays of the ascending moon. Ooh, pretty. Did <laughs> I even get closer? A gigantic piece of stone, I soon assured myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I said, it's a big rock! <laughs> but I was conscious of a distinct impression that its contour and position were not altogether the work of nature. No shit! It's perfectly squared! What? A closer scrutiny filled me with sensations I cannot express. For despite its enormous magnitude and its position in an abyss which had yawned at the bottom of the sea since the world was young, I perceived beyond a doubt that the strange object was a well-shaped monolith <laughs> whose massive bulk had known the workmanship and perhaps the worship of living and thinking creatures. Dazed and frightened, yet not without a certain thrill of the scientist's or archaeologist's delight, I examined my surroundings more closely. I am examining my surroundings. The moon, now near the zenith, shone weirdly and vividly above the towering steeps that hemmed in the chasm. I like that word, zenith. And revealed the fact that a far-flung body of water flowed at the bottom winding out of sight in both directions and almost lapping my feet as I stood on the slope. Who's that? Okay. Across the chasm, the wavelets washed the base of the Cyclopean monolith, on whose surface I could now trace both inscriptions and crude sculptures. Nice. The writing was in a system of hieroglyphics unknown to me and unlike anything I'd ever seen in books. Oh, that's a shark. That's a shark. That's a turtle. That's a shell. That's a jellyfish. Okay. 
consisting for the most part of conventionalized aquatic symbols such as fishes, oh. eels, <laughs> being a smart ass for no reason. Mollusks, whales, and the like. Several characters obviously represented marine things which are unknown to the modern world. But whose decomposing forms I had observed on the ocean risen plain. It was the pictorial carving, however, that did most to hold me spellbound. <clears throat> Dagon contains many themes and storytelling methods that Lovecraft developed in his la oh, I don't need to do the voice. The later works such as telling the story through carvings at the mountains of madness, the nameless city, journals and character notes, the shadow out of time, the haunters of the dark, haunters. Islands emerged from the ocean, the Call of Cthulhu, or fictional beings and deities based on real events and mythologies, Migo, in the Whisper in Darkness. It's also considered the origin of the popular Cthulhu mythos. Some of Lovecraft's other stories also include in a matter I've done. Plainly visible across the intervening water, on account of their enormous size, were an array of vast reliefs whose subjects would have excited the envy of a Dore. I don't know what a dory is. I think that these things were supposed to depict men, at least a certain sort of men. Though the creatures were shown disporting like fishes in the waters of some marine grotto, or paying homage at some monolithic shrine which appeared to be under the waves as well. Of their faces and forms I dare not speak in detail. For the mere remembrance makes me grow faint. Grotesque beyond the imagination of a Poe or a Bulwer. That's not very nice. They were damnably human in general outline, despite webbed hands and feet, shockingly wide and flabby lips, glassy, bulging eyes, and other features less pleasant to recall. Curiously enough, they seem to have been chiseled badly out of proportion with their scenic background. For one of the creatures was shown in the act of killing a whale, represented as but little larger than himself. I Damn. remarked, and you're talking as shit I say, on that? Their grotesqueness and strange size. Yeah, let's call that thing that's basically bodying a whale ugly. Yeah, that's smart. But in a moment decided that they were merely the imaginary gods of some primitive fishing or seafaring tribe. Some tribe whose last descendant had perished eras before the first ancestor of the Piltdown or Neanderthal man was born. Cool. Awestruck at this unexpected glimpse into a past beyond the conception of the most daring anthropologist, I stood musing whilst the moon cast queer reflections on the silent channel before me. Then, suddenly, what? I saw it. What? What? What the fuck is that? With only a slight churning to mark its rise to the surface. Slight? Surface, There's the nothing slight about it! The dark waters. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Like a stupendous monster of nightmares to the monolith. <laughs> it's a thing you called ugly. You, you want to call him ugly again a while he's standing there? Flung its gigantic screams, while it bowed its hideous head and gave vent to certain measured sounds. A roar. I think I went mad then. Oh, that's what sent you mad. Of my frantic ascent of the slope and cliff. And of my delirious journey back to the stranded boat, I remember little. <laughs> I believe I sang a great deal and laughed oddly when I was unable to sing. <laughs> yeah. I like how the fish man is what sent him bonkers, not all this. I have indistinct recollections of a great storm sometime after I reached the boat. At any rate, I know that I heard bells of thunder and other tones which nature utters only in her wildest moods. When I came out of the shadows, 
I was in a San Francisco hospital. Ah, the horror! Brought thither by the captain of the American ship which had picked up my boat in mid-ocean. In my delirium, I had said much, but found that my words had been given scant attention. <laughs> Probably chalked it up to sea bonkers. Of any land upheaval in the Pacific, my rescuers knew nothing. Nor did I deem it necessary to insist upon a thing which I knew they could not believe. Who opened that door? <laughs> Once I sought out a celebrated ethnologist and amused him with peculiar questions regarding the ancient Philistine legend of Dagon, the fish god. <coughs> Dagon was the main deity of the Philistines, worshipped through the Middle East as the ancient god of fertility and crops. In Hebrew, the word Dagon was a common noun for grain. The rulers of Akkad, Mesopotamia, chose him as the patron saint of their war conquests. He also appeared as the judge of the dead in a Syrian poem and underworld prison warder in one of the Babylonian texts. He is often mistakenly taken for a fish god due to the wrong interpretations of his name. As in Hebrew, the word dag means fish. In H.P. Lovecraft's word, Dagon is an underwater deity ruling over the Deep Ones, a humanoid race with fish trade <gasps> that resides in the ocean. He is worshipped by a secret cult called the Esoteric Order of Dagon. Neat. Okay. But soon perceiving that he was hopelessly conventional, I did not press my inquiries. Oh. History and stuff. Y'all can pause and read if you want. I'm moving on. I don't care. Ugh, it's weird. I'm just trying to- Ah! Okay. Okay. What's happening? Oh. It is at night, especially when the moon is gibbous and waning, that I see the thing. I tried morphine, but the drug has given only transient surcease and has drawn me into its clutches as a hopeless slave. So now, I am to end it all, having written a full account for the information or the contemptuous amusement of my fellow men. All right. Oh, he's, he's blocked the door. Lovecraft hated tobacco, even though he used to smoke when he was 12. Woo! Anyways. Okay, moving on. Y'all can read it. Often, I ask myself if it could not all have been a pure phantasm, a mere freak of fever as I lay sun-stricken and raving in the open boat after my escape from the German man of war. This I ask myself, but ever does there come before me a hideously vivid vision in reply. I cannot think of the deep sea without shuddering at the nameless things that may at this very moment be crawling and floundering on its slimy bed. I think that's a lot of people. Worshipping their ancient stone idols. <laughs> and detestable likenesses on submarine obelisks of water-soaked granite. I dream of a day when they may rise above the billows to drag down into their reeking talons the remnants of puny, war-exhausted mankind. Of a day when the land shall sink and the dark ocean shall ascend amidst universal pandemonium. Damn. It's an awesome sight. Are they moving, or is it just the wooey-wavy? Oh, I think it's just the wooey-wavy. I don't know what's happening here. Okay. God damn. The end is near. If I don't move, I 
No! I don't have rent yet! Unfortunately, I take more of the piss out of this. With the giant sea monster thing going by the boat, I think to keep better to imagination at the at what lies beneath the sea kind of thing, to not see its fin like that and whatnot, but just like this big ominous shape sail or sail swim below the boat, obscured by the water, so that we know it's there and are like whoa by its size. But with like showing of the fin, a lot of the imagination, in my opinion, kind of goes out the window. But eh, what do I know? I hear a noise at the door, as of some immense slippery body lumbering against it. <laughs> what if I don't want to go towards the door? It shall not find me. I think it did. God, that hand. <laughs> I'm not moving. I'm not moving. The window. Nope. The window. Nope. Bring it out, bitch! Come on! I'm here, do it now! What are you waiting for? Kill me! I'm gonna wait! I'm gonna wait! I am I, I am a man! This <laughs> is the music done. Ah! Music's back for round two. Uh fine. Yes! <laughs> Hope you enjoyed yourself, yes. I, I actually did. I, I did enjoy myself, and I apologize to the devs if they ever see this for, like, you know, kind of, like, making jokes. I thoroughly appreciated everything I was in. And I am not the expert on video game making or anything like that. And I know that trying to create cosmic horror in the physical sense that we can see takes a lot of the aspect of what cosmic horror is out of it. Because cosmic horror is, in a sense, indescribable sense of dread, existential dread, blah, blah. And to give it shape and form can take a lot out of that. But I think they did really good in creating a sense of isolation and what the fuckiness. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. I apologize to everybody for kind of taking the piss out of it, but I enjoyed it. And I think that I'm definitely going to get the DLC and <laughs> keep it going. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It's your boy, Teddy. If you liked what you see, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment. Have yourselves a wonderful day.